Okay, so this is not supposed to be a pitch for our group's sponsor, but Training Peaks is what I use to um, to write the athletes' schedules. And I, I have to tell you, if you're interested, let me know because I can get you a really good deal. And here's the story: is everything's there. First of all, it's very easy to build the schedule, but the athletes, if you make them log all their work on here, like poor Jim has years and years of spreadsheets and spreadsheets and papers and notes and handwritten. <laughs> All this stuff, and he did a great job, but now it's 2015. We don't need to be writing handwritten notes. We can do it on something like this. And then you have, and like, so when I look at my athletes, um, they're all on the side here. I can go back months and months and months and look at anything they've done. I can take uh, a set, like I can take Matt's half marathon segment from last year, look at it against this year's. I can use that to give him confidence, to show him that he's ready, to show, you know, about how the workouts went and the average pace and all these sorts of things is really, really good. I would talk more about it, but I don't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the actual plan that I wrote for Amy last year. Um, and again, I worked backwards, but I'll show you from the beginning and you can see the progression. I'm huge on progression. Uh, you're just, you gain, it's an intoxicating feeling as an athlete to get fitter by the week. That's how I like to have the athletes feel. Now, mind you, she's starting this workout uh, already with some fitness, okay? So it starts off pretty hard, harder than maybe it would if she was starting from ground zero or coming off an injury or something like that. Um, I like to do a little quote at the beginning of the week. This one was the journey of a thousand miles, begins with one step. Um, kind of made sense. It was We had just started working together and it was the start of this segment and all these things. So I, I like the, the, the quote for that week to make sense based on what she's doing or what they're doing. Fartlick right there. Love fartlek work. Love it for cross country. It was a big piece to the puzzle because you have to trust your internal rhythm. I just took you through the race. There was no splits for her. She, she was wearing a watch, but she wasn't looking at it. Okay. You have to trust yourself and know yourself. Did a little fartlek there. Did 16 by 400 there. Um, but slow. That wasn't a fat, that wasn't a speed workout. That was a cruise 400s with just one minute rest. So just kind of getting the rhythm. Uh, let's, oh, I don't know. There we go. Um, I was still in uh, PowerPoint mode. So remember I said added hill sprints, okay, after the run. Here's an eight mile steady state. Um, I put that in there and I made it eight, which was kind of challenging because she had never done an eight mile steady state before and I wanted to kind of, uh, kind of get it in her mind right away that this is a new era in her career. We're not being conservative anymore. We're gonna challenge her. And she hit it. They'll surprise you, you know, she hit it. Uh, we did what I called, or what we call in Flagstaff, the lumberjack. I like that, that's cool. Even for these pros, naming a workout, making it fun, okay, is cool. It's one of those workouts that's a hybrid, has a lot of different stuff going on, four by 400, then a 10 minute tempo, then four by 400, then a 10 minute tempo, then another four by 400. Okay, so we're working different things, we're learning about pace change, okay. But we're just getting tough, that's what we're doing. Um, she had another fart lick here. Um, she had a she had a cross country race during this segment um, in Scotland. She had made the U.S. team in Scotland for the Great Edinburgh Race. So I threw this quote on there: "The freedom of cross country is so primitive. It's woman versus nature." Uh, from Lynn Jennings. Take that one, ladies, for your uh, teams or guys who coach girls. Um, she ran okay here, not great. It was very muddy. Uh, she's not much of a mutter, and so it didn't go well. Uh, but you know, she'll live to see another day. Um, respect recovery. She had traveled all the way to Scotland, okay, to run a cross country race. It was her first US team. I wasn't about to give her a workout on Tuesday. Okay, she's not ready emotionally, she's not ready physically. Easy day, easy day, easy day. Finally a workout on Thursday, but it wasn't a hard one. Six mile steady state. Less than she had done a week earlier, okay? Just wanted her to get a good one in. We, not every workout has to be a home run, okay? You need to hit these singles and doubles, okay? It gives you confidence, you're building. Um, Let's see, what was my next one? 14 mile long run for her. At this stage, I wasn't adding a lot of, her long runs weren't meant to be terribly hard because she was getting used to that longer mileage. So just a regular long run there. Um, hill circuits here we did. So um, we can get creative. Remember the lumberjack? Uh, I like getting creative. Hill circuits as opposed to just hill repeats. So we have a park in Flagstaff called Buffalo Park, very famous uh, park, a lot of people run there all the time. But uh, our circuit has a downhill stride. Gotta learn how to run downhill too, especially for cross country, 
Okay, so we have about 150 downhill stride that we do. It's all effort. Tell them to run that at 3K race effort. Uh, then we have about a 250, 200 meter, I guess, uh, like very hard, fairly challenging, uh, steep uphill that we run at 5K race effort. And we have a jog. Then we have a big, long 600 meter downhill that we do at marathon effort. Uh, again, learning how to run downhill, but not crazy. I don't want them to kill themselves. Okay. Then we do a hundred or 200 meter uh, at mile race pace on the on the um, hard gravel at the bottom of that hill, or the hard, I guess it's uh, pavement. And then we uh, jog a little bit. Then we come up that 650 meter hill at half marathon effort, and that's the end of the loops. Two miles of full loop. But we're getting all this kind of different work in. We're getting different race pace. We're getting different effort. We're getting uphills. We're getting downhills. Love hill circuits. Jim used to love hill circuits. We did a lot of hill circuits back in the day. Um, there was another tempo run where I added something. So I only wanted her to do a three-mile tempo run, but I wanted to get a little more work in the day. So we did eight by one on, one off fartlek after the tempo. Um, go down to the next bit here. Uh, let's see, what do we have that week? So now she's done a couple of long runs. She's starting to get used to it. So I threw a fast finish onto the end of her long run there. I love these. Now your kids probably aren't running 15 miles, but I really like doing this because here's what happens in fast finish long run. So these kids, or, or her in this case, um, they, they think of long run as already being hard, right? And so like, let's, let's say it's 10 miles for a high school senior or something. Um, they start getting used to 10 miles, and then you tell them, okay, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to run the first seven or eight regular, and then we're going to run the last two or three hard. They do it. It's amazing for your confidence, you know, because they'll end up running almost close to their tempo run pace for the last two or three miles, and it just shows them that you have more at the end than you think you do. And I don't know what it is about the body, but it, I, I always like these too. You can really run fast at the end of a run because you're so loose and you're into it. And uh, it's really good for the confidence. So once you guys get the kids built up to where they're doing a fairly long run and they're used to it, I would encourage you to incorporate these fast finish long runs and have them finish last mile or two fast on a marked course. They'll really get some confidence from it. Um, 10 by 800, I said we got to get some VO2 work in. So we did 10 by 800 there. I did that on the grass. I wanted her to get used to the grass. Um, there was that big cut down. So we went 6, 550, 540, 530, 520. So it was five miles. And uh, I think her last mile was 522. She didn't quite hit the 520, but uh, it was a very challenging workout and really, uh, really gave her a lot of confidence, I think. Uh, we did a few 200s here. Remember, got to do that occasionally. I, I broke my two, uh, two easy day rule here only because this was a very simple, this is just extended strides, really, eight by 200. Then we did that indoor mile. I made them run 12 miles afterward because that's where the long run was supposed to fit. Um, they didn't like that uh, <laughs> so much, uh, but they did it, they did it. Um, and then this is the week of the race. So um, I think this is good for you guys to look at. Um, uh, first of all, the quote that week, if you want to win a race, you have to go a little berserk. I was already trying to plant that seed that they might be able to win that thing. Um, six by 1200, like I said, at 530 pace right there. Okay, so get used to the race pace. Uh, pretty darn easy, a lot easier than usual, but just in terms of mileage and just in terms of those last three days. There wasn't a massive taper uh, for this race, and then there's the race. So that's it.